With more than $2 billion at stake, the capital risks were gigantic. Two proud rivals locked in a contest to produce the most advanced tactical fighter the world had seen. Lockheed's YF-22 and Northrop's YF-23. Directives from the Pentagon were simple, yet required unprecedented advances in technology. First, the advanced tactical fighter had to be more maneuverable than the enemy. The ability to maintain the turn and burn or yank and bank or maneuverability that Northrop had been so famous for, that's the key element of a fighter aircraft. The ATF had to fly supersonic without using a gas-guzzling afterburner. The afterburners are nothing more than a device which pumps a huge amount of fuel behind the engine. Prior to that time, fighter planes would only fly supersonic for brief periods to either catch up with an enemy that they were trying to shoot down or to run away from one that was trying to shoot them down. The ATF had to be low observable or invisible to enemy radar. It primarily means building the airframe in such a way that the radar energy that hits it goes in some direction other than the direction it came from. The ATF also had to be reliable and maintainable in adverse situations. This remarkable machine could be maintained by a bunch of 18, 20 year old Air Force technicians out in Europe somewhere or up in the cold of Alaska with about half of the requirements that an F-15 squadron would take at the same time. The other directives being met would ensure the final requirement, survivability. The motivation was to make an aircraft that would allow the pilot to perform his mission with a very high degree of safety, a very high probability that he could return to his family and to his home base in good condition. The requirements on the F-23 were far in excess of anything we designed to in the past. If we could get the technology for supercruise, stealth, and maneuverability in one package, it would be a quantum leap in fighter design. Web of Secrecy. Black Widow 2 Declassified.